Welcome back to Life as God Intended. And today we're diving into an essential topic. Uh, the topic being the temptations we face daily. And what 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15 describes as the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life. And of course, we all know from experience that these temptations are powerful. But we also, those of us who are Christ ones and have walked with the Lord and relied upon him, we also know that by walking by faith through grace, we can overcome them. So let's explore how we can live in victory over these worldly desires. And as I mentioned, the first uh, reference here in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now that ought to cause us pause immediately, because here is another clear verse uh, emphasizing that as human beings, God created us as derivative creatures. And John is clearly articulating that. He's saying that this lust of the flesh, which we'll describe here in a moment, doesn't come from your heavenly father. It's not derived from your father, but it is derived from the world. And so there are always two spiritual sources or origins for everything that you and I choose to give ourselves to. So let's discuss a little bit about what this lust of the flesh means that John referenced here in the epistle. The, the lust of the flesh refers to our desires for personal gratification. That is, we want to please ourselves without regard for God's will. Okay, we've all experienced this once again. We've all fallen prey to giving ourselves to fleshly lusts. It's the flesh pattern of sin that constantly fights against God's purposes for our lives. And Galatians 5.17, Paul stated that the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, that these two are contrary to each other. And as a result, you know, I know that we cannot do the things that we would like as Christians. However, if we are led by the Spirit, which is always a choice, we're choosing creatures, we're to walk by faith, then we're not under the law, which is another interesting statement by the Apostle Paul because you don't need rules and regulations to stay consistent in your walk with the Lord and not yield to the flesh. Why? Because Christ lives within you. He's the only one that's ever lived the Christian life. And he's not calling us to try to imitate him. He's calling us to participate with him. So let me give you a practical illustration. Imagine you're at a party and there's this buffet table with all your favorite foods. And you've decided to eat healthfully. You know, I just came off 40 day fast, many of you know. So let's just say I stepped up to that table and you know, the temptation would be to indulge oneself. That would be strong. However, it would be a temptation if that's what you were previously led not to do. And even though this is a small example of the lust of the flesh, it is an example of where our physical cravings can overpower our spiritual commitments if, in fact, we're depending on rules and regulations rather than Christ as our life. Let me give you another practical illustration. <laughs> Imagine you are at a beach in Hawaii, 5,000 miles away from home, like I currently am. <laughs> the temptation that comes to you to lust for someone that doesn't belong to you. 
And unless you are grounded relationally in Christ, you may yield to sexual immorality. The scriptural reference, and there's many of them, but the one that I'll reference for our consideration for this broadcast is Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 to 21, which warns about the deeds of the flesh, such as sexual immorality, jealousy, and fits of anger. Obviously, these are all contrary to God's desire for you and I, and these all represent lusts of the flesh, which, as I've already stated, attempt to seek personal gratification rather than simply relying on God to meet all of your needs. The second reference that John makes there in 1 John is the lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes is desiring what we see. The lust of the eyes is our aspiration to possess, to possess what we see. It's the endless accumulation of material possessions, the stuff that we fill our garages and closets and attics and, and, and we just pursue our time. It, it's the insatiable desire for more, better, and newer things. Let me give you a practical illustration. Think about window shopping. My, I'm here at Waikiki Beach, which is one of the most fantastic mile and a half resort communities, certainly in the United States. And it's just got thousands of shops, high end, low end. Well, I don't know if there's any low end, but lots of shops. And you could literally be tempted to get more stuff just because of the availability. Now, if you had, obviously had the money. <laughs> but is this, this desire, you know, when we give ourselves into it, can lead to a hardened heart towards God's true blessings and provisions, wanting something more. And too often, the first sign of greed is always wanting just a little more. You probably have heard that when Jay Rockefeller was asked how much money was enough, and of course he was a multi-multi-millionaire, his answer was just a little more. Of course, that's greed. We're never content with what we have. A biblical example of the lust of the eyes is uh, David. Remember King David and Bathsheba? David saw her, desired her, and it led to sin in 2 Samuel chapter 11. Now, the truth is, and this again was Old Testament and it's not necessarily something that God even intended for David, but he already had multiple wives, but he just wanted a little more. So the eyes are often the gateway to temptation. And that's why scripture talks about guarding your eyes, allowing Christ to be on guard for you, to keep you from lusting for things that aren't meant for you. The third reference that John states is the pride of life. And the pride of life is promoting ourselves. The pride of life is the desire for personal reputation and recognition. It's an arrogant spirit of self-sufficiency and the craving for applause and status. And this, at the heart of, of this pride for life, this reputation, recognition, applause and status is the humanistic belief of promoting oneself, that you're at the center of all things. And of course, we can see exactly where this began. It began in the Garden of Eden with the serpent tempting Eve with the potential, or at least what he was tempting her with, that she had self-potential. She could decide for herself 
what the difference between good and evil would be simply by eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's the big lie. And of course, the human race has been caught in this lie of self-potential ever since. What about a practical illustration? Well, consider social media. You're listening to me on social media, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Facebook, or some other means, even if it's just uh, through the internet, where people often showcase their lives to receive likes, validation, and prominence. And of course, this can foster an unhealthy pride in what life offers us. And what does it do? It shifts our focus away from God. A spiritual insight would be that pride was Satan's downfall. He was probably the most um, amazing angel that God created with some of the greatest giftedness that the Lord desired an angelic angel to have. And yet, he wasn't content. He wasn't satisfied. He desired to be like God, not to serve him. We read about that analogy in Isaiah 14 in verses 12 through 15. And this simple pride can lead us to strife and division in our families, in our churches, and in our communities. You know, it all starts thinking higher of ourselves than others, which is the opposite of God's love. So in conclusion, as believers, you and I are called to live differently than the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are temptations that can lead us away from God's will. But with the Holy Spirit's guidance, the Spirit of Christ dwelling within us, we can overcome these challenges. We're in the world. There's nothing wrong with being in the world or not to be of the world. And so my call to action to you today and my encouragement to you today is if you're struggling with these temptations, first, acknowledge it. Denial is a form of pride. And then once you've acknowledged it, then in faith, turn to Christ to experience his strength. Live in the conscious awareness of Christ's presence in your daily journey and surround yourself with a supportive faith community. If this mes message has resonated with you, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more content to help you live as God intended, experiencing life as God intended. Not for my edification, not for my prominence, but that Christ would be exalted, that Christ would be um, spread throughout the earth. Well, thanks for watching. And remember the words of the Apostle Paul, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. God.